All right, brother. <laughs> nah, we got it. <laughs> What's going on? Chilling, man. Just hanging out, bro. That's crazy, man. I think the last time I seen you was... Oh, shit. I don't even remember. <laughs> well, you're, you out in, uh, what, SAC, right? Still? No, Los Angeles. Los Angeles? Oh, okay. Uh, damn, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Maybe the last time I saw you was probably when I battled uh, Footy Foots or something in uh, Sacramento. Yeah. I think that was the last time I saw you, bro. When, you know how long ago that was, though, bro? Man, it was definitely before I was painting. That's for sure. That was like around, that's like 2002. No, really? That lit? Damn. Okay. Yeah, bro. That's a minute, bro. Damn. Well, it's good to circle back <laughs> around, bro. <laughs> I know. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So um, how's life been treating you, though, bro? Because I know, like, when I spoke to Ben, you know, he was saying that, I guess, like, Super Crew, and you, was go, you guys were supposed to go all through um, Italy and do stuff like that. And then when the virus hit, yeah. it just changed all you guys' plans. Yeah, man. It was crazy. We just did an Asia tour, like, a month before the shutdown out here. So we we're just traveling through Korea, Japan, and Guam in two weeks, and uh, basically seeing the whole world on that side of the world starting to shut down, and you know, seeing how everybody was gonna uh, get ready for for this whole pandemic to take place and stuff. So it was cool. We got a little tour just to run through and come back, and then we were like, we ain't going to finish no Europe tour. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lockdown for a little while until we figure out what's gonna happen and stuff. So yeah. So. So that's end up what happened in her. What's that? That's how it ended up happening, that you guys just came back to Vegas? Yeah, and it felt like we just brought it with us. <laughs> oh, snap, okay. Yeah, but, you know, not the sickness, just just the, the world we saw over there already going through it and then coming here and then, um, yeah, just preparing for it. You know, we had, like, two weeks left, and, you know, we just I knew it was going to shut down and stuff, so unfortunate events just just trippy to see it on different parts of the world yeah yeah that's but crazy though bro so are you yeah, yeah are, are you originally from las vegas yeah originally from las vegas originally uh me and ben are the ones who started knucklehead zoo oh tell me about that bro oh for sure uh we met each other in high school playing soccer together for the same high school team and one day this fool started doing head spins and then i was breaking uh, right after soccer practice that we were both playing for the same <laughs> team. And then ever since then, man, he's, he burned me. And I was just like, yo, I'm just going to chill with you because you're pretty much the only cat that I know that breaks out here. And I'm just trying to keep break, trying to break mm -hmm. through. And we just basically started, you know, growing since then, man. And we didn't stop hanging out with each other since, since, uh, since yeah, since that age. That's crazy. That's kind of how me and Romine's relationship is, though, bro. Like, yeah. like 25 years, 27 years later, like we're, we can still call each other. That's what's up, dude. Yeah. I mean, me and Ben, yeah, I've been through thick and thin and, and everywhere around the world together, man. So it's it's definitely a blessing to still be be there with my brother and stuff. Yeah. So when, when you first started seeing Breaking, it was in high school? Uh, No, I was already seeing it. Like, when I was born in Texas, I saw it, like, growing up because I was just a dancer as a kid. Just, like, not studio, just family get-togethers, and they were all dancing grandma's my first teacher of like oh my my grandson's not gonna be able to have no lady if you don't know how to dance like that type of idea and shit you know so oh i started seeing it on movies and everything just in a small town in texas until we moved out here in vegas in 93 and uh you know started just kind of it started buzzing around a little bit and seeing my friends getting into it so i just dropped my bag and started doing it man and i was just like man i've always wanted to be a ninja so this is the closest thing I can get to, you know? Yeah, yeah. And What's up, Mike? There, just yeah. Everybody. Mike Murda. I see you, Mike Murda. Um, so with that being said, was Rock Skittles crew already a part? It was already established in Las Vegas? Yeah. Like, by that point, I didn't even know, like, crews by then, by junior high and all that. I just knew that, you know, breaking was coming back. And I was like, I knew. Oh, that. yeah. And then as soon as, you know, I was going into high school, I started hearing about stuff like that. And then... uh um you know we started practicing together we started forming each other we were broken legacy before knucklehead zoo oh man okay so we were kind of learning that part and what's weird is that my dad was at a barber shop and runs into wiggles and goes yo my son's a b-boy and he was like oh okay no doubt and he goes can you teach him 
And he was like, yeah. And then Wiggle started picking me up after school. And no way. Me, yeah, straight up and just picking me up and taking me to the shop and, and just schooling me on the culture. And That's crazy, bro. Yeah, it was a trip. So I ended up bringing him to career day in high school. <laughs> no way, Mr. Wiggles? Yeah, bro. Like right after he did the Usher My Way music video, um, him and Flo that did that music video. It was right after that, and this fool came through, taught the career day class, fucking scared everybody, and showed them on some real hip hop shit. And uh, <laughs> it was it was dope. Like the whole sh the whole school got shut down, and and I was still I'm still bugging to this day every time, man. Like, if I run into Wiggles, I'm like, yo, remember that time you came to my high school, bro? He's like, yeah, that that shit was fun. <laughs> That's legendary, though, bro, to have Mr. Wiggles come to your school. It's straight up. Like, it was a trip. I didn't think he was going to say yes, but I was just like, eh, fuck it. This is not going to hurt. You know? What did he do, like a little popping showcase? He was popping. He was explaining b-boying and all that. Um, he explained everything, graph writing, just the whole culture. He was yeah. literally showing them, like, why breaking is what it is to mm -hmm. what it's, what it's uh, game to be and stuff. So. Mm. Okay. All right, my bad. Yes. No, that's cool. Guy likes the yet. <laughs> okay. But, what jerseys that you got on, bro? Is that a Bulls jersey? Oh, uh, yeah, Jordan, man. Dang, I always wanted one of those jerseys. <laughs> I stumbled across one, and I was like, wow. I hope uh, I hope the printing stays on as long as it can and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's, like that's cool. One too, so. Oh, really? It's a champion one? Yeah. So it's classic. Classic fucking. Just, How long have you had? Uh, damn, for, for like twelve years or something, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I've had it for a long time. I collect a lot of a lot of replica jerseys from soccer to to ba basketball jerseys, everything, man. I've always been a big old jersey fan. I mean, playing yeah. sports for so long and stuff. Yeah. That's so tight, though, bro. Um, so during that time too, did, did you know who Ronnie was from Full Force? Yeah, by that point, we knew – me and Ben basically were, like, kind of getting schooled. Like, I was – my parents were strict, so I couldn't go out much. So mm. uh, this is when we were younger. And, but Ben and, and his brother and the rest of the crew members were just going out to jams, and then they would come back, feed me knowledge, and kind of just let me know what was up and stuff. So I started getting schooled by them, by Wiggles. And I already knew I met Wicked by that point. Mm. And, you know, I, I met Flo. And everybody, but I was just literally a fly on the wall, just kind of learning. Mm. And, uh, you know, not trying to step on any toes or anything. Just just put my notes in the pad, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's tight, though, bro. Um, so Knucklehead Zoo has been around for how long? Uh, I would say it was a 20. We had a 21-year anniversary, not last year. I think we're, yeah, 22, 23 years now coming up. Wow, bro. So since 98. Damn, that's dope, though, man. So it's it's funny, yeah. It just uh, been around since day one, man. So I got yeah. that at one point, but then I got robbed back in, and I was in family no matter what. But I started Rouse back in the day when Rouse yeah. was in session. And, uh, yeah, that was just a fun little side you know, crew that we ended up joining and then everybody stuck around and then we basically went back to, you know, to our original crews and stuff like that too, which was cool. It was like we were, we were the rebels, the little runaways. Yeah. So right back to, to the family. How many people's in Knuckleheads um, Zoo combined? Even with the kids? Oh, uh, I don't consider the kids part of the crew. That's oh, okay. Not. Yeah, they're their own crew. Uh, me, I just consider the originals, you know. I don't consider the coat tellers either. I just consider oh. them. Yeah, it's just the originals. It's like me, Ben, Chris, uh, Leo, Kenny, um, you know, Fonzie, Stress, Mike Berta. Mm -hmm. That's what we were basically traveling the world with, you know. Like, yeah. Those are the cats that we were all putting together our, our, our blood, sweat, and tears to make the crew represent us because you were representing okay. everybody else and that was the, that was the goal so mm -hmm. um yeah those are the originals the kids i'm not part of that even though i taught them first before anybody did like most of them 
um, when I was just teaching b-boying classes out here and stuff. And uh, I started doing shows on the strip, like Jabberwockies and all that. So then I just mm. didn't have any time to, uh, to keep running with it, you know. So I gave it to the Dis, and then he started picking up on it and just took off with it, man. Mm. So from there, just, uh, yeah, the rest is history. The kids are just phenomenal now. Love watching mm. them. Um, mm -hmm. at every jam rocking cyphers with them when we used to <laughs> oh man i know huh yeah i can't wait for that to come back man yeah so um cheerio like cheerios yeah. are old school she, is she like one of the original beagles out of vegas straight up straight up her um there was a couple other b-girls but she's still b-girling like she's the original and she's always going to be the legendary b-girl of Las Vegas forever, bro. Like I know. Years and years. So that Alfred, you know, uh, Floor Rock. Let's see, he's a big old, you know, homie, and and definitely a big, huge pioneer of Vegas. Stingray. Mhm. Mm you know, all the cats. Who else? Uh, yeah, Ronnie, his brother. Yeah, we basically just bounced around, learning from them too, man, or battling them. Yeah. It was sick. Is Battleborn still active? Oh yeah. Now they got the, they're building their army of kids now. Oh, they are? Yeah, so they're doing their breaking academy out here. Um, really? Yeah, Kareem's actually part of it, partnered up with them and, and doing show, or, uh, you know, uh, classes with them and, and training camps with them and stuff. Mm. So, yeah, it's dope, man. Everybody's growing and, and getting the next generation kind of, you know, situated and started for, for Vegas, which is dope. You know? Yeah. So, but... It's 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 great to see the whole generation, like all the next generations coming to life and stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. these kids are just doing everything crazy now, man. It's a beautiful thing, bro. Yeah. Breaking, breaking world records and shit in different parts of the world, too. So it's... So so you, you never moved out of Las Vegas before? No. I mean, yeah. Just always been stuck here since 93, man. Hopefully not to... Yeah. Yeah. It's so hot in Vegas, bro. I mean, I went one year, it was so damn hot yeah. that we didn't come out the hotel until it got dark. <laughs> Vampire lifestyle, yeah. Oh, my gosh, it was blazing hot in Las Vegas, so, bro. Like, <laughs> how do you do it, though, bro? Honestly, how do you do it? Ah, uh, man, just got to learn to live with it. I'm not going to lie to you, though. Like, when I, was a, when I was a kid and I first moved here, I would wake up in the middle of the night and stick my head in the freezer for, like, an hour. And literally go back to sleep, man. And then my parents were like, yo, you need to chill out on that. I'm like, it's so damn hot, yo. But uh, I think playing soccer for so many years as a kid, I just ended up coping with it. So now it's like, you know when to go out, what time, what hours, and what not to, you know? So, yeah. So is it, is, it, is it hot right now in Vegas? It's actually nice and cool for like a night, a uh, Vegas night right now. But yesterday it was like 111, 112. Oh, that would have been like, oh. Yep, and you got to be up on your tents, man. If you if you don't have tinted windows in your car, you're like you're like an ant under a magnifying glass in your car, bro. That is so crazy, though, bro. It's scorching hot. Um, so what do you guys just keep the air on? Is, is that how you guys do it? Yeah, man, keeping the air on and, yeah, just uh, stay hydrated. <laughs> Staying hydrated, okay. So the, um, the name... Um, you, you like to go by Ricardo or Freaky? Well, I'm still both names. Um, people that know me from the b-boy world and the hip-hop world know me as Freak, or Freak Sinatra, um, <laughs> Frico Suave, El Fricon. There's so many AKAs of Freak. Where did that come from, though, bro? Like, where did the name Freaky come from? Oh, uh, man, because my real name is Ricky. Like, besides Ricardo, like, my real name is Ricardo, but everybody call me Ricky. So uh, back in the day, just dancing with the ladies, bro. Everybody like, yo, Freaky Ricky, Freaky Ricky. And I was like, all right, cool. Then I'm going to roll with Freak. It, it's spelled like break. Might as well roll with Freak. And then uh, John Lake was, was, was one of my favorite idols and shit. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh, shit. He came out with a stand-up special called Freak. He's a crazy ass. He's a good character. Making everybody laugh, having fun and shit. So I was just like, yeah, I'll roll with it, Freak. You know, mm. like, so, yes. yeah. But the Ricardo Arts is my real name, but it's my artist name and corporately what I'm known by now primarily. Oh, okay. Yeah. What kind of art do you do? Uh, this type of art. Like, uh, oh. yeah, this is my very first painting that I did that I learned how to do called performance painting. Okay. Um, it used to be called speed painting, but I don't like to call it that because it sounds like you're on drugs or some shit. 
So mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, I got mentored by David Garibaldi from, from Sacramento. Okay. And he's been doing it for, I want to say, uh, over 12 plus years and stuff. So we met each other doing Jabba and we just clicked, you know? And then one day he asked me, he was like, yo, would you ever do what I'm doing? And I was like, I've been breaking. I've been looking for some missing piece of puzzle of my craft or something mm. I do to maybe uh, elaborate myself or maybe even uh, try to reach out to help other people in charities, businesses, all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a long stretch after that, but yeah, I just want, it looked dope, man. I was like dancing and painting. Why not? I mean, I'm doing all style battles and winning them. Why don't I just create my own style? Mm. That was always the idea to be a mythical creature like Ivan or, 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 uh, you know, remind or any of these cats that were just so like, you know, innovative and, and I needed to do my part too, you know, cause a lot of things that stuck to me was like, is, uh, ask, uh, don't, it's not about what hip hop's done for you, it's what have you done for hip hop? So I kept that head, that, that slogan in my head for so long that I just always went my own path and, and uh, just walked to the beat of my own drum. So now I paint. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's dope though, man. Thank you. I like that. Um, so before I met you though, Freaky, did you ever hear about me? Like, just like the word of mouth, like, yeah. you know, be like, yeah, that's, that's quality, that's that's super day, that's jazzy. Yup. I mean, we we're growing up watching the generation, the you know, generation before us, like style and you guys, like, yeah, everything, man. And we wanted to be just as badass as everybody else was. Yeah, we were growing up looking at, it, you know, we'd just be like, well, we're the next generation, so we got to do our part now. Yeah. But growing up, I mean, if it wasn't for you guys setting standards, from like being different from like you know, uh, Rocksteady Crew to you know, um, all the other crews, like Battle Squad from, from Storm to all the other up and coming crews, Expression crews and all them, like it, if it wasn't for that West Coast kind of b yeah. mentality, I, yeah, it, it, we would have never be who we were today and shit. I, I agree with that, bro, because Knucklehead Zoo, like early 90s though, bro, you guys were always in everything though, bro. You guys were in the finals. <laughs> used to be like it was always knucklehead zoo versus like some crazy ass name like la breakers or knucklehead zoo versus <laughs> battle monkeys or i will always hear knucklehead zoo even in like the, the late 2000s like 2003 2004 2005 mm -hmm. i will always hear about you guys names you know still and i used to think like damn bro then i then i started hearing knucklehead cali started popping up yeah. and i used to kind of get confused i was like knucklehead zoo knucklehead cali and I'm thinking, like, is it the same crew? But it wasn't the same crew. <laughs> nah, we've always uh, been a different crew. But they came up around the same time. So um, I've said this story, like, pl plenty of times. But, I mean, we're, we're cool. Everything's squashed. Nothing's ever been, like, you know, bad animosity. I think that gained who we were, which was dope. Right. We were, we were pushing each other to be the better knucklehead, which was dope. Mm -hmm. you know, it was like it was like an evil twin. And we were both trying to, like, be the best and shit, which pushed us right. to be, you know, always in the finals, killing it. Like, yo, Knuckles Kelly won this jam. Oh, I heard Knuckles won this jam. And it was just dope, man. Like, so yeah. now I, I can say that I'm both crews. I'm Knuckleheads and I'm Knuckles Kelly and Knuckles Zoo. Only me and Ben. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. So who came up with the idea for this? Uh, I would say Knuckles Kelly did, you know. Oh, that's her thing? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like uh it's Millhouse. Yeah. So with him being at some point, he was like in between both crews. Like we were using, he was coming to jams with, with Ben and Chris, you know, back in the day, like they were doing jams in England and different parts. And this just came about, man. Like, you know, that's how you know who a real OG knucklehead is. is if you do okay. This. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it, it was a statement um it was our symbol it's it's what we are you know and that's how you know a real og of knuckleheads and stuff mm. so it's funny seeing all these little kids with boogers in their nose and stuff and you're like nah bro you ain't you ain't <laughs> and i can't salute you i mean that it's it's whatever you know I, I, we make a whole crowd you know we would do it we'd be like oh let's, let's do a selfie you know before selfies were a thing we would have the whole arena if we performed a knucklehead zoo show we would have the whole arena doing this but it was yeah. like our, our salute to each other. 
Right. So are you? So you're a part of Super Crew and and um, Jabberwockies? Uh, no, I just did the Jabberwocky show as a cast member. So I did it while they were doing uh, Monte Carlo, Muse I See, and um, Prism at Luxor. I was just doing that, and then uh, yeah, I've always been down with Super Crew since since Super Crew. <laughs> so you you, you rep both, right? Uh, I rep Super Crew. Oh, you rep Super Crew. Yeah, Jab is their own entity. They're, okay. They're the homies, but I got to work with them as a cast member. Okay. Being in the crew is yeah, that's a different story. That's the guys that were on the TV show. Mm -hmm. As the originals oh. and stuff. I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about breaking today? It's dope, man. Um, I'm judging this breaking versus crumb thing right now, which mm. is kind of like, uh, um, it's me, Flexum, and Odin that are, you know, trying to break down all the, the B-boys right now. It's called War of the Worlds. Okay. So we picked top 16, and it's going to break it down to the last two B-boys, and they're going to battle against Crumpers um, remote, virtual. Uh, mm. So it's a cool, dope. Um, idea for us to, I think, transition right now. So like I said, the next generation learning how to use this virtual world right now is amazing. Because we're not going to... You gonna think stop. so? Yeah. You know, it's our escape right now. If we can't leave the house, like, how else are we going to be able to innovate ourselves, you know? Oh, yeah. So that's the beautiful thing. I think the future looks dope. Um, I don't know what's going to end up being. Hopefully, we'll go back to jams. But I hope, like, I'm hoping soon. Cause I miss the I miss the circles, man. I I miss I miss being around like the the, the vibe and the aura of, of what hip hop has made us, you know. Mm -hmm. so. It's gonna be some time next year for sure, though, bro. Like it's, it's not gonna happen this year. Right, and then the yeah. Olympics, you know, pretty soon after that. Mm -hmm. So that that uh, I I enjoy, it, man. I love it. Like I just been uh, I've been training myself just because I wanna I, I wanna feel ready again for something to pop open. Like I just, mm -hmm. and that's who made me who I am, and I I I enjoy it. I enjoy watching a lot of cats that are just submitting videos and creative ideas that are just flowing from different parts of the world. It's crazy. You could see, you could almost see where where those b boys that are coming up, uh, where they've been influenced by, mm. which is pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty sick, man. And then uh, yeah, it's been training and stuff too. So. It's it's been uh it's definitely been a high to get away from all the monotony right now that's been crazy and and uh definitely a peaceful blend to try to you know keep keep everything moving and stuff so I'm enjoying mm -hmm. you know and I practice with my boy B boy uh Luca from Brazil okay. so me and him been training and this fool is like a warrior bro like this cat is ready for Red Bull BC one right now you know like he even it did it last year but. On another level, this cat is just on some 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 deep rooted stuff right now, man. So mm. yeah, he keeps, okay. He keeps me pretty inspired. <laughs> yeah, who who are some of the b boys that you like today? Uh, for sure, like Luca. Uh, you know all the classics. Uh, Menno, Menno's okay, amazing. Um, the young kids, you know, like uh, Shikix. Um, mm -hmm. you know uh. Uh, who else? I'm just literally just blanking names right now. <laughs> What's um, up, B-Boy Luca? Mike Yice. Oh, shit. Love you, bro. Hell yeah. Um, a lot of people coming up, man, that I just don't... Oh, Grom is one of the contestants for our Breaking versus Crown. Okay. That kid is, is, is fire already, bro. Like, his first mm. round for this top 16, I was like, damn, this fool came through. Like, <laughs> these Russian kids don't play, man. So... Um, there's so many kids, there's so many people now. There's, there's, there's like crazy styles, you know, Justin from, from, uh, from, um, Hustle Kids. He's, he's, oh, yeah. Sonny from, from England. I mean, I, I still love watching just my crew alone, though, too. Like Ronnie and Ben. Like those fools inspired me since day one. Like every time I see him, like we're the same age still. And these fools are still, you know, going at it and doing some, some, some heavy artillery stuff, so it's kind of cool around <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, though, man. So, uh, what really keeps you inspired, like to, to, to want to really stay involved with breaking, though? Because I know, like, as an artist, like some days I feel unmotivated, you know. But I think for me, since I've been around it for so long, it's like I have to keep reassuring myself, like, okay, 
You know, when I started listening to like, um, I started listening to the music that I started breaking when I first started breaking, which was Street Jams. Yeah. And when I hear Street Jams, bro, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I know why I still love this. Hell yeah. Man, yeah, that's a big old inspiration right there alone. I think Street music, Jams, that electro funk. Yeah, the music now, too, like playing around with different tones, um, like from Jay Electronica's new album to like, you know, some some new jazz or some new mm. some new funk, even dancing to like, you know, different types of music kind of has been inspiring me. Like even dancing to Gary Clark Jr. Like that, to me, is like a movement um, of different parts of your body that can kind of connect with and and come up with different textures of breaking has been yeah. inspiring me and motivating me lately. Um, and also, let alone, I mean, just doing my own art now and is. Uh, it's cool. It's not just like I'm painting on a wall, like, oh, there goes this motherfucker painting on a wall. Up there. <laughs> it's like, no, I kind of come up with like a, a, I'm coming from a director's standpoint where I'm trying to engage something to, to have a point of where I'm trying to say without saying it with just through my art. Heps does the same thing. Have you seen Heps, Joe? Yeah, man. Big old respect to Heps, man. Like, we're basically doing the exact same thing, but there's different deliveries, which is dope, you know? Yeah. Um, I do it upside down because it's kind of entertaining. It's traditional. Um, like, I represented Joe Coy, um, his Netflix, Netflix special that came out. Okay. Uh, Ronnie was in on it, so I don't know if you watched the stand-up special, but it represents Filipino b-boys all around the world. Dizzy, Mouse is on it. Like, they're all, they're all repping in it, in Netflix special for him. And so what I did is, like, Joe Coy's been around in Vegas for a long time doing Illest in the Game host to doing stand-up at all these big old casinos and still repping, you know, and still, like, always being there for the community. Um, so I figured it was way my, my way to pay homage to him for taking Netflix to the Philippines, showing the b-boy world, the hip-hop culture out there, the stand-up comedian specials, the artists, the people he's grown up with. So I painted him as, as like, you know, appreciation of from the community to like, yo, like, thank you for repping us for this long and, you know, mm -hmm. being there from since since I moved to Vegas and shit. Mm. So, yeah, different ways. Yeah. To, yeah. Play around with and stuff, man. That's tight, though, Freaky, man. I appreciate it, bro. Um, if, if you have to look back and say, you know, what, what was one of your favorite battles that you ever seen? Yeah. Which one would you pick? For me, the one that I've seen with my own eyes would have to be probably Stylemans versus Rocksteady because I was in the front row. Ooh, yeah, then I would definitely probably go with that one too. I was, I was thought you were thinking of uh, what battle like we've been in, but scene? Yeah, and, scene. Ooh. Those are, that's, those are tough ones. Got to see some different crazy battles around the world too, man. That, oh, okay. Yeah, like... I, I wasn't a part of it, but when we went as a U.S. team to to France for this one World Street Dance battle thing, it was a squad of Nugget Zoo and Lions of Zion put together mm. that Kareem and Morris actually put together. And we went out there with them and, you know, we met Isaiah, we met Toys and uh, Dom Key. And they, these fools battled uh, like basically the squad of Hustle Kids in the finals. And, bro, it was a fucking ferocious battle out there. Oh, I want to watch it. Yeah, dude, it was sick, Doug. And then we ended up battling in the hotel later on that night because Hustle Kids got mad that the U.S. got to, to, go, to go to the finals. So then they called out me and Ben, and we're just fucking battling. Lamine is there. He's like, you guys can't battle in the lobby. We got to go upstairs to the fucking top of the uh, <laughs> ceiling or the, the top floor so where, where the practice rooms are. We got to fucking finish this shit off. And we were like... Yo, everybody just started running upstairs. Like, you know, one of those crazy hotel type of battles and shit, so. Damn, bro. It got crazy, break, man. Yeah. Break, yeah, breaking has so many, um, so many history. I mean, so many stories like that, bro. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever heard that, you know, so. I oh, appreciate yeah. you. Oh, shit, my bad. Uh, okay. Fonzie goes, the family versus Rock Force is his personal favorite. That's the Oh, really? Guy. That's a classic. I mean, you could even say, uh, what is it? The Flying Tortillas versus uh, versus um, Soul Control. Soul Control. Yeah. Man, I think we ran out that VHS tape till, till, till the wheels fell off, bro. Watch you watched that one a lot? Oh, hell yeah. 
because I think we were in just getting out of high school by then and we only you know had those VHS tapes so we were just banging that that videotape over and over like yo we gotta watch Cujo no nah, we gotta watch Ivan no nah, we gotta watch Storm look at like yeah yeah classic battles bro that's dope though man yeah now when I look back to um does we have a lot of this time to reflect I, I think about I think about times like that too as well because it's like those type of battles are always going to be remembered as long as people, I think as long as people is ex exist because like style events, like they, they, it's like they, they changed, they changed the world though, bro. When they went after rock steady. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was definitely a big, huge pinnacle in, in, in the B-boy world out, you know, especially yeah. when you went to battle of the year to, to win it for the U S you know? Oh yeah, dude. We well, reminded the, uh, we well, reminded the Ariel that he popped up on his hands and he stuck his hands up like that. Bro. I was looking at the tape like, bro, like, so sorry, Rockers had no chance. It's straight up, man. It was like, yo, we're back on the map. You know that that shit was dope. That was a big, huge part for us. Yeah. And then we looked at that too. You know, just uh, being the first crew to go right back out to Battle of the Year in two thousand five. Okay. You know, while that documentary Planet B was going on, we were just like, yo, man, we're like, we're, we're, we're style elements. We're not like, we got to make our, our, our mark in the, in the history books and stuff too, you know? Mm -hmm. so it was definitely like uh, style elements for sure, man. Even Boogie Brats, bro. Yeah. Even though like they're, you know, transitioned from Canada and US, but I would watch their freaking crew video all the time, bro. And I'd be like, Damn, that's how we need to settle arguments now, bro. The way fucking Migas and fucking K Mel were settling arguments in the hotel. Um, yeah. That's that's the way. Like those yeah, that, yeah. that was the video though, bro. Like I used to watch that one all the time. Like I had ordered it. And I was happy when it came in the mail because it had the cover with the um with the however they was doing his fingers, the boogie brats. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to throw it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was something like Something like whatever, yeah. But I remember when I got the cover, I was excited though, bro. Like when I see Migas part though, I was just tripping though, bro. Like when I see Migas, when I see Migas part, and it's like one of those things though, bro. Like like when, when um, veterans, you know, serve Vietnam, they look back and they're just like, battling was everything though, bro. You know that battling was everything, yep. you know. Ballot to me was kind of like one of those things that you you did it because you wanted you wanted the other people to have your respect because they was already running their mouth, you know, when they seen you, mm -hmm. you know. So a lot of times when you would walk in, you remember Ballot used to be vicious though, bro. I seen people get punched in the mouth. Yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, Ballot was some hate shit. When you walked in. You was like, fuck those dudes, though, bro. And like, that's how it was all night. Yeah, man. Straight up. You know, now it's a lot different, you know. And I'm just glad to see Breaking still around, though, bro, after all these years. Oh, for sure, man. It's a blessing. And definitely. Yeah. It's taken to a whole new level. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that I have my name in hip hop. That, like, if I show up, like, people still know who I am. That's what's up, man. Hell yeah. I mean. To me, that's. It. Yeah. It's a big thing, right? It's yeah, it's like, a big thing because even for yourself, I'm pretty sure, like, I mean, a lot of people say it don't matter, but when you show up to a jam, bro, and you go to the circle and people look around and everybody look at you and they kind of give you a head nod and you don't even have to go down, that's the dope because they know that you already, you don't even have to get in the circle if you don't want to because you already got their respect. Straight up, for real. That's one of the dopest feelings in breaking, though, bro. We don't have to go down and the DJ or somebody might be like, yo, Check this out. We got Freaky from Knucklehead Zoo. Give it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You with your girl or something like in the back, like, <laughs> thank you. You know what I'm saying? You don't even have to go down, bro. You might be dressed up, you know, real nice. Yeah. And I think that's the best feeling in breaking, though, bro, because a lot of the older, um, older old school B-boys, they, they kind of feel like real sour and bitter about that. Nobody really recognizes them anymore. Right, man. You know, you know? Yeah. And it kind of sucks. You've been breaking for like 30 something years and you go to the jam and everybody walk past you and they don't even know who you are. Yeah, man. I mean, I've had that dealt with me now too in the, in, with the kids, you know? So I'm just, yeah. like, I'm not going to be one of the Magnum pioneer dudes or any of that. Like I don't even consider myself pioneer like that. I just, 
I don't want to seem. I've even had people tell me like, "Yo, you don't dance anymore." I'm like, "What are you talking?" About? <laughs> like, I, I do more than that, bro. Like, I'm trying to do everything still. Like, yeah. But it's just trying to refresh everybody's memory now, because you can be, you know, something today and something else tomorrow, or they won't even yeah. remember tomorrow. Yeah, so bro. It's, it's kind of cool. It's chasing, chasing the tail. Yeah, B boy lifespan, bro. If they don't see you in a year, you're washed up. Yeah, straight up. I was like, yo, it's kind of cool that these new cats don't even remember who I am or anything, because I could come out and do some old shit. And they go, where'd you come up with that? I'd be like, I don't know. I just came up with it on the spot or something. But <laughs> yeah, you just yeah, exactly. You can kind of just throw them off, like I don't know, like yeah, I started breaking. You know, after I seen like YouTube, you you can make up a story and they'll be like, you know what? There's a dude in Knucklehead's name is Freaky. He does that move. You'd be like, yeah, I heard of him too. <laughs> he doesn't have a beard <laughs> back then, right? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, bro. It, it happened to me before because one time I went to a jam and all these dudes were like breaking it, and I came outside and this kid came out and he's like, what's up, what's up? And he looked at me. He said, what's your name? He, his name was something like B-Boy Radio. And I said, Mike Yais. And he said, Mike Yais, he's all, are you in the crew? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody started laughing like that, bro. Yeah. And, and he looked around and said, what's, what's wrong? And everybody was <laughs> It's a trip, man. It's a, he didn't know who I was. Yeah, so yeah, he didn't know who I was. That's fucking crazy. It's, it's a trip, man. You just have to refresh the memory, which is the cool part about it, to try to keep, keep up with the times, you know? Yeah. And then after they told him who I was, he came back and he apologized to me, though, bro. Oh, dope. Okay, that's you a fact. He's like a fucking asshole, bro. He's all, I can't believe <laughs> it, bro. Mikey Yais, he's all, oh, my God, that so stupid. I didn't want to correct him. You know what I'm saying? I just kind of, like, looked at him. Everybody was just laughing for me because it was just like, Mikey's been there since the beginning. Like, how could you not know who that is? Yeah, you had to kind of leave it unanswered just to let him kind of figure out the, you know, yeah. through the crates of, of what the history really is and who you mm -hmm. are. And once, and once he figured it out, he came back and he apologized. He didn't have to apologize to me, but I think he kind of felt so, he kind of felt so embarrassed that he didn't know who I was. It's kind of like if somebody, some kids breaking in, they're like, hey, you heard of Rock City Crew? And he's like, no, I never heard of Rock City Crew. Everybody's going to be like, you, obviously, you, you haven't been around, bro. <laughs> exactly. It's almost funny to believe that you never even heard of like, you know, like names like that that's been in the game like 30 something years though, bro. So, yeah. um, we we talked and everything, and he, he was a teenager. Yeah. I was a teenager, though, bro. He was only that. breaking for four years, too. Oh, okay, yeah. He's got a lot of schooling to do, man. Yeah. And some, some kids, they don't think they need the schooling, but I think it just be able it, – it's something that they kind of have to endure themselves. To be yeah, you can't push it on them. Yeah, you know, otherwise yeah. it, it just doesn't get, you know, really um, – they don't absorb the experience. If, if mm -hmm. you lift it on them, you know, they, they'll mm -hmm. learn it one day. If not, they're going to learn it the hard way. <laughs> yeah, when they become like 29, 30 years old, then they're going to like go back and be like, I need to start working on my footwork. You should have yeah. did that, bro, when you were 16. <laughs> right? Why does it take you like 25 years later to figure out like breaking and top rocking footwork is the essence to breaking? Exactly. It's you know? Yeah, the whole foundation. Yeah, it's the dance. It's always been a dance. Builds build, build yeah. your style and who you are, you know? I, you know, I, I feel like these kids can just pick up anything now, but it's like, nah, you got to create yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing, though, too. Like, I mean, like, you yeah. know, uh, Fonzie telling about, like, uh, Freaky versus <laughs> Tight Eyes, like, when I battled them in 2015. Oh, I got to watch that. You battled them? Yeah, we did an a exhibition battle out here in Vegas, and... Um, it was supposed to be three rounds only, but we ended up going like 12, 13 rounds, bro. Mm. And that was dope, you know, just to Who be you think a won? world. Huh? Who do you think won that battle? Um, in my eyes, from a breaking perspective, I won. Okay. But I'm battling in a crumper, so everything is subjective. But the, you know, the win or lose part, I mean, for me, I was trying to understand crumping, but I was learning mm from a different perspective. Like, I was like, throw me in the pack of wolves. I'm going to figure it out. I'm not going to make it easy for you when you battle me. So yeah. We're going to go We're gonna go in. Everything you're going to do, I'm going to do it but the way I do it. But I'm going to put your texture in me and just kind of let whatever happens, happens. 
Oh, okay. So he would like climb up on the truss and stuff, and I climbed up and did a freeze, jumped up. It just I need to watch wild. that though, bro. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. There's a couple of rounds that are uh, thrown off. I knew they were gonna do it. Like it sucks. <laughs> They were going to sabotage the footage somehow and be like, oh, the battery ran out. I'm like, motherfucker, bro. Oh, okay. It was the people that were there. I still get mad credit for, and I give a lot of credit to all the people in, in crumping, you know, because, you know, I'll be walking around and a bunch of crumpers be like, yo, you freak Sinatra? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, word, man, I seen you battle tie dyes. I'm like, oh, dope, man. Respect. So, oh, that's tight. Yeah. And it was crazy because I just had paint, been started painting like within two years. And uh, I painted a painting for tie dyes to give to him. The beginning of the battle as respect, you know, like okay. this is what I'm doing now, you know, like here you go. And I don't think people saw that coming. But the funny part was, is that I asked Crumpers all the time. I'm like, yo, do you think I won that battle? Like, nah, he got you, man. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, but if I would have grabbed that painting I made from and ripped it all up and took a shit on it or some shit like crazy, would I have won? They go, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, you got to do something extreme, though, bro. Yeah, so I had to learn it the hard way, man. But, I mean, it was definitely fun. And, you know, I got to shoot a movie with uh, Tie Dyes last year in, in, in Philippines. Whenever mm. that comes out, or if I'm in it or not, whatever. But, I mean, it was just, it's cool to see where the break team has been able to transition to other people in different styles and stuff, too. Now. Yeah. You know, because now there's a lot of B-boys at Crump as well, too, which the movement is... Is, is dope and now i feel like we're two powerful dances that can be able to either combine each other to help each other or combine to keep battling to push each other um no matter mm. what with fire you know because yeah every, every element speaks but for ours we're we're, we're speaking power mm. which is dope it's just the, the that's the texture is power yeah uh, storytelling um character everything you know? mm -hmm. it's really sick dude yeah, I I That's... hope uh, I hope a lot of people enter the well. I mean, I hope a lot of people are, uh, tune into the world, the world's jam that uh, we're gonna be judging in the next few days and stuff. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna watch it though too myself though. Yeah, so we're gonna be having these cats do submissions, and we got B boys battling all the way to the top two, and then same thing for crumping. So crumpers are judging that part. B boys like me, Flexim and Odin are judging the B boys to the top two. And those top two are going to battle, you know, the top two crumpers. Oh, okay. That's where the worlds collide and stuff to be able to see who, you know, it's very subjective. I mean, it's going to be hard for both of us, uh, all of us to be together and, and judge this battle. We don't know what's going to mm. turn out to, but it's, it's definitely worth a shot. And it's, it's, it's definitely going to be uh, something in the making anyways, you know? So it's the mm. part of it. Yeah. Man, Freak, I know I could talk to you forever, though, bro. You got a lot of knowledge like myself. For sure, man. But um, I just want to say, um, if you could give some advice for today's generation, you know, learning back from, like, what you did in the past and in the future and people that's going to watch this after, what would you share to them to say, this is how you stay inspired in 2020? Ooh. Uh, stay innovative, man. Stay artistic, do whatever drives you and moves you, but stay positive too. Don't stay get positive. In, yeah, don't get lost in the sauce, man. Um, it's out there too, bro. There's a big ass pot of it. It is, man, and it's tough to see, you know, because it, it's hard for me to speak on or see, you know, just I'm not trying to create negative drama or anything like that. You, you know what I know? So freaky, and like you know, people are watching though too. I think the new sauce for like the b boy world is that everybody's tripping off this thing now where. People, they know that it started from there, but it's kind of like they fail to really understand that hip hop culture is black culture. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the roots of it is black culture. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times these opportunities that um, brothers like myself and other people, we kind of get overlooked. So everybody's kind of being like, and I know that's the new arguments with B-boys now. They're just like, ah, oh, I don't believe in that shit. You know, black lives and this and that. You know what? We've always been here, but it's like, it's not even about that, bro. It's about like what we're saying, though. Like, you wouldn't have a platform. I wouldn't have really have a platform if it wasn't for these brothers that was in the Bronx, though. You know what I'm saying? That put it down. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So to try to forget them and bypass them and say, you know what? Like, it doesn't even matter. It's like, nah, bro. It always mattered. Always. You know what I'm saying? 
it always mattered for these people because if they wouldn't have laid the foundation, like there, there wouldn't be no style. There wouldn't be no Air Force. No, there would. Yeah, there would. Yeah. Yeah. All these crews, even like the Europe, like saving breaking. I want to say when yeah. after the media fucked it up for us in the eighties and shit. Like I feel like Europe saved it, Asia saved it, like all these other parts of the world saved it because we all believe in evolution, right? Mm -hmm. So from black culture to be able to, you know, introduce breaking into that and then the Latin world and everybody just kind of, you know, just going down the river from there, you know, to see where it's going to spread out to into the oceans. And we're all coming together to, you know, still you know, give respect and pay homage to, but evolution is still going to grow, man. Look at these kids, man. They're, yeah. They're, they're, they're crazy doing crazy shit. Yeah. No. But that's a, but that's the thing that I see right now. I still was still I'm still seeing other b boys like fight about this issue between um, you know, it's it's just like crazy though, bro. And I'm thinking to myself like, that's like a waste of time though, bro. Because right? I think we've so. always been united. We've always been united before the shit. Yeah. We've yeah. always been united though, bro. Yeah. Majority of my friend, ninety five percent of my friends are Mexican. We're. So there's never been separation. Yeah, exactly. There's never been separation between blacks and Latinos. Never. No, no man. Ever. Ever. Especially in hip hop. Especially in hip hop. Yep. Like there's never been like, okay, Mexicans on one side and black lives on this side. It's not no, bro. We're hip hop. We're all together. Exactly, man. We're pushing each other to get away from this you know, that that noise, you know? That's what it was for me, though, too. Instead of being in the hood and wanting to be sagging my pants and game banging, I wanted to learn how to do swipes and hand glides. Exactly, bro. I mean, yeah. up, with my cousins being in gangs and all that, I was like, I don't think I want to grow up to be a criminal, yo. I want to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't see, I don't see, you know, a, a future in that. So I want, nah. I want to grow up to, to, to evolve myself and see what it comes about. Like, no questions, no, you know, just let the future be the answer for me. And to say on top of what you're saying, I agree with you, man, like to help each other, push each other. And it's mm -hmm. not like to claim anything right now. And I think a lot of people are bullying and policing yeah. people about hip hop when it's like, this is not the reason why we get into hip hop. And a lot of these cats are younger too. And I'm like, how are you going to tell me that I'm not a part of, you know, the culture? Like there's all these cancel culture dudes now. And I'm like, I think you're looking at it from a different perspective, man. Like I was taught by Wiggles. Like I was taught by the cats that brought this to where it's at now. And they're still the pioneers of it to this day, judging jams and, and still teaching the rest of the world about the culture, the right. Mm -hmm. And I understand right. there's people out there that are teaching, oh, this welcome to my hip hop class. And then they're like, but I don't dance hip hop outside of this studio. Like, you know, it's like, well, then you're not <laughs> part of the culture, you know? Yeah. It's it's very hard to say, man. I just wish we didn't have to circle around to bash heads to think about it that way. Yeah. We're going to the Olympics, whether you think about it just to be artistic or sport, but think about it this way. In my mind, some of these people that grew up with nothing in different parts of the world, now they have something to grow and, and, and become an Olympian, become something great for their country, become something great for their own family to feed them. That's what Red Bull BC1 to me is too. It's like a lot of these cats we didn't know about in like Kazakhstan and India and all that. And now they've got some crazy b-boys coming out of the woodworks from different parts of the world, man. And that's what this thing has always been unified as. Mm. Different cultures coming together in this big old melting pot of hip hop culture. Yeah. So straight up, man. I'm, I'm awesome, with you. Man. Yeah, man. Thank you, Freak. I appreciate it, bro. I just want to say um, huge inspiration to me though, bro. I remember you used to be real short I'm still short. And, yeah, he's still short. <laughs> no beard. And I used to think, like, this dude got heart, though, because he won't give up. I used to look at you, and I used to think, like, this dude, like, he's breaking like he's K-Mail. Like, you, your attitude was, like, oh, like man. you're the best. And I used to trip on that because you was, like, like a spud web. You was, like, the spud web of breaking. Hey, man. But I you have the heart of a lion, though, bro. And I have been thinking, like, this little dude, like, <laughs> he don't get tired. <laughs> This was down all night. Like, he don't get tired. Like, he ain't getting gas. No, I got them soccer lungs. <laughs> yeah, bro. So I just want to um, just give you, um, just pay you some respect, though, bro, because a lot of times in the b-boy world, sometimes people got to pass away and be like, oh, 
You know, he was one of the greatest of all. I said, nah, bro, I, I want to do it now while we're all while we're all alive. I shouldn't wait for you to pass away to be like, yo, remember Freaky? It's like, nah, man, like, I want to talk to you now. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it, man. That's what we got to so do is stay connected. Yeah, and I just want to say, um, you, everybody, like, all you guys do, the knucklehead zoo, though, bro, to me, you guys are like the next style elements when, especially when you guys had the, um, What's his name? Stress, though, bro. Stress is on some shit, though, bro. I see Stress jump up in the air. Bro, he clicked his legs together. He must have jumped like seven feet up in the air. And came off point, though, bro. He sprung back up on his feet and looked at you like, top it. <laughs> I'm like, this motherfucker jumped seven foot up in the air, though, bro. He clapped, clicked his legs, though, bro. And, like, he landed back. He had that real house style, though, bro. That's what I liked about Stress. Yeah. He was just a, yeah, he, he was a freaking mythical creature, man. That was what yeah. he would always tell me. He's like, be better than everybody and then walk away. But don't forget to grab their lady while you're walking away with them. You know, or something <laughs> like that. I'm like, this cat is just burning everybody, bro. But still, I, I want to tell you, like, he's probably the most phenomenal dancer I've ever met in my life, bro. Like, really yeah. so bad B-boy, bro. Like, and he's still breaking wherever he's at, you know. Hope to see him. But Okay. Yeah, like him, fuck Fonzie and Mike Murder, bro. When they started joining our crew, man, we, we it's like we had to fucking grow the fuck up, man. We, mm. All right, we're a bunch of kids, but now these cats have been in the clubs already and stuff. So we're gonna have to grow up and you know start start you know picking up our fucking grabbing our cojones and be like, yo, let's 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 make this happen, you know? Yeah. So it's definitely dope, man. Stress, uh, he's a motherfucking man. He's definitely okay. Dope. Yeah, freak. Much yeah, respect, freak. Bro. Yeah, thank you, bro, for coming on. If and when you see me go live, um, just kind of tune in. I I got some um some legendary people coming up. Before you, I had did um Cool Roski from the Fat Boys. Oh, sick, bro. Yeah, like you can watch it if you want to watch it though, bro. And like my thing is that I'm trying to bring all the elements together though, like which is which is hip hop though, bro. And the Fat Boys is one of the most legendary um hip-hop groups that ever came out of New York along with Randy MC. Fat Boys were huge, though, bro. Yeah, man. Straight up. You Even know, the movies were fucking dope. <laughs> yeah, Crush Groove. We talked about Crush Groove, you know, and Sick. it was dope to be able to talk to that dude, you know, because who would have ever thought, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Fat Boys, though, bro. Like, yeah, man. that, you know, that I can be able to have a conversation, like, with one of the most iconic hip-hop groups ever to come out of New York besides Randy MC as a group. Right. You know, so for me to be able to do that today in 2020, it's like I, I'm literally like I'm blown away, though, bro. And I did Grandmaster Cass. Um, That's dope. everybody. Be, yeah. Before you, like I, I, I did Baby Love. Oh, word. That's what I did. Saying. Baby Love. I'll tag you in the interview bro. I did Baby Love. Hell yeah, man. What? That's classic. Bro. <laughs> hey, keep doing what you're doing, man. This is fucking dope to fucking really put the hip hop legends out there still, you know? Yeah, freaky. So so far combined, I think probably with you, I probably done about like 125 interviews on Instagram. Dope, man. Well, shit, I'm gonna stay in tune, man, and I hope the rest of the people watching too stay in tune. Yeah. See where these people are at and where where yeah. everything's going, you know, because now we can get into each other's lives and interview each other or or ask questions. Yeah, this this is a good way to have a conversation because like how you said, bro, I haven't seen you in 20 years, so it took this for me to see you so this is a good thing though you know what i'm saying like yeah. if the internet can draw us together yeah and i haven't seen you in 20 years that's how that's how you know that this shit is amazing yeah man definitely thank you to instagram no. <laughs> yeah honestly I, I look at instagram as a positive tool i know people can do whatever they want with it yeah. but i'm using this platform to go as, as far as i can go with it though bro and i'm going pretty far that's like um nice. I spoke to Amigo from Flying Steps in Germany. Ooh. Um, yeah, though, bro. I did him. Man, I did all types of people. I can't remember, though, bro. And I got 100 or something. I did Mr. Freeze. I did um, everybody from Miami, though, bro. It's, it's crazy how many people, how everybody's told. I spoke to Abstract. I did Remind two days ago. Like, Sick, it's, yeah. Watch bro. That one. Yeah, and I did Scheme. Remember, you ever seen um, Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah. I did skiing. Whoa, that's classic, bro. Shit. Yeah, bro, I, I did skiing, bro. Yeah, I, I was kind of blown away that I got a chance to interview skiing. I thought that was super amazing. That's pretty fucking dope. Man. Wow, you know what I'm saying? 
Hell yeah. And now you're Star Wars. Like, Star. That's one thing that I was kind of like uh, enjoying too when, um, you know, uh, Top Nine was bringing out all these classic B Boys now mm -hmm. uh, to do Battle of the Gods, where it was like okay. Crazy Legs versus fucking Storm. Like, dude, this is, this is dope, man. Like, keep doing what you're doing right now because that's basically like that. But then you could get in their heads though, too. You don't yeah. see them battle, you know, you can talk to them and, and, and feel them out and shit and see where they're coming from as well from, from their perspective of their approach yeah. to the floor or to the music, mm -hmm. the graph writing to, to emceeing and everything, man. So Yeah, all the elements though, bro. So I'm hitting on the elements. So thank you, Freaky Man. Stay thank safe. You, and uh, I'm going to try to come out to Vegas though, bro. Uh, when I do, yeah. I'm going to hit you up. I'm going to try to see if I can hang out with Floor Rock. All right, dope. Hell yeah, man. Bring some bring some sunblock, bro, just in case, all right? No. Nah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, bro. All right, man. Peace out. Good to see Peace. you. Good to hear from me, bro. Stay up. You too. All right. Peace.